All right, folks, today we have a bit of background noise. I've got a pump running over there, so if I can't edit it out, you might hear some of that uh, filling up an IVC. But today we have the Sonoff uh, NS panel. So this I bought from itiad, itiad.cc, and it is a smart scene wall switch. Uh, it actually looks pretty cool. I just bought a few Sonoff things to try. But you can see here that it's got remote control, uh, countdown timers, voice control, share control, smart control, thermostat, widgets, touch control, all the controls that you need, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, 240 volt compatible. The main thing is that you can flash these with um, ESP Home, which I'm going to have to do in a separate video, but I thought I'd have a look at it. I've already opened it, of course. And I think it's actually a pretty nifty product. So I'll put a link below. It's on special for $65.90 US at the moment, so about $100 Australian. It's normally, uh, let's zoom in on this one a bit. All right, so it's normally $75 US, which works out to 75 USD in Australian. Yeah, about 115. So you can see it's a basic display here. It's got a little protection thing on top of it. It's glossy, all right quality, two buttons. And then on the back here, so I've got the US one. Uh, Supports 240 volts, but the main thing is that it's the right shape that you want. So here, that mounting bracket, you can see it just uses a little 8-pin connector there. But that'll fit the Australian uh, cavities that we've got here. So I'm going to stick this in the house and wire up two of the lights to it, just to see how it does. But that's after I've flashed it and after we've had a look at it. You can see the way it works here, so I'll put it the right way around for you, is you're, you're live in, live out. Uh, live out one, live out two, live in, and your neutral. So your neutral is going to be common to all the connections, but then yeah, live in and your live out separate to each of them. It's got your specs there as well. It doesn't have the Australian ticks that you want, so it's technically illegal to for someone to sell this in Australia. But if you know what you're doing, you can use it. Yeah, it um it is main 240 volt wiring, so you should be a qualified trained electrician to install these. I've done enough of it, worked as a TA to be able to do this, even though I probably technically shouldn't. The important things here that I'm really interested in is that it has the built-in thermostat, which can also detect humidity. It's got a built-in microphone, it's got the display, and it's got the relay. So putting SP Home on this, and you can already get all the templates for it, should be an absolute breeze. First up though, let's get it connected. I've got a suicide cable here, and I'm just gonna wire this straight in, along with two of these little GU10 connections. But First, just the cable, so we can see what's going on or what it does. And I had a beer here too. Ah, oh. the usual. So you just slide that little panel off. You got your screw connectors. So that's screwed in there nice and firmly. You want to make sure it's unplugged when you do that. Maybe even cover your eyes if you're not confident when you plug it in. But you're off to the races. Now you can see here, it pretty much boots straight up. Can I get it to focus on there? And it just wants to be paired with Bluetooth. So I'm going to jump over to my phone now, start screen recording, and show you what that initial pairing looks, looks like. So now we're looking at the eWeeLink app, which you've got to install for the initial pairing of this. If you flashed it, you probably don't have to, but for now you do. Very Chinesey, as you can see. And when you first sign in, I mean, it's only doing this because I've just reset it. It doesn't always say, please submit a feedback. You need to create an account. Now this instantly puts me off ever using this. I don't want to ever have to create an account. That's why I love the WIDS stuff so much. I don't want it to be cloud controlled. I don't want anything to have remote access to this. So for now, I'm just going to go try it. Now, when you trial it, you've got 60 days and then all your stuff's wiped. So it'll at least let us have a look at it. That's another reason, you know, there's no local only, not create an account. So definitely not going to be using this EWE link crap. Now, you can also see it's got ads in it. Another reason I'm sure as hell not keeping this. But what we can do is we can go add. We want to go Bluetooth pairing. I'm pretty certain the indicator's doing its thing. That's probably it. Add your Wi-Fi network to it. 
it pushes out the config. You can say this is in the other room. Let's index our product names. And done. There we go. So you can see in the app, we've got the basic turn things on and off. It says it's 25 scene here, which is about right. Uh, 24, 25 seems right. Now you've got your standard thermostat option here, heater, cooler. Okay, so that's, say so if you're gonna have it wired into a thermostat, you can adjust the accuracy of the temperature. You can schedule the timing on and off, loop, timer, all that sort of stuff. You've then also got a few other little options here, so location sharing with other people, whether you want to access it locally on the network, which could be handy, I've not looked at the APIs. Uh, default power on state is pretty handy, especially for lighting. Inching and interlocking, which can be really handy for third party integrations, or if you've got appliances plugged into it that you want to work in a certain way. Change it to freedom units if need be, but we live in Australia here. And then screen settings, uh, I'm going to have to blur that. Now, the other thing that you can do is add widgets to it. So I haven't really tinkered with this because I don't really care much for any of the EWE Link stuff and it's not even loading widgets, but there are the options of multiple pages and widgets, which I'll play with with ESP Home. And there is also a setting somewhere on here that I found before where you can specify the display orientation. Now, I think that's actually on the device. So now we've got this wired in, let's go back and have a look at the device itself and the default functionality. All right, so we're back here and we can see that it's just got the temperature, the date, and it's got both the weather temperature and then what we're also supposed to be getting. Uh, you can also see as we turn these on and off, you've got these little blue indicators and they're not touch, but you can see it does support swipe. We can add some other apps and widgets there. And then we've got this settings here. That's where you can change your orientation, sleep time, everything like that. I think there might've been, that was widgets. That was also widgets. Yeah, there's the orientation, 24 hour time, which is how I want it. So pretty straightforward, really. Um, I do like it. I think there's going to be a lot more that we can do with it once we've got ESP Home on it. Whatever you tie it into, you can then use the microphone and thermostat that you can see in the bottom there. It's not a hugely high quality screen, but it's definitely good enough. Like this mounted on your wall, we have a look at it there. Yeah, that'll look quite nice, especially once you turn the brightness down a little bit, we can get back to that. It's just sitting there, you know, out the corner, looking nice. I like it. You could have it with the upcoming footy games on it, whatever you want to tie into it. I'm probably definitely going to have the weather, maybe have one of the little camera views on it. So now, last but not least, let's unplug it, and I'm just going to wire these GU10s into it, and we'll see what it looks like turning things on and off, just how it responds. All right, there are so many things that I did wrong there that I'm not even gonna to start to name them. Um, I'm sure you could definitely see a few, but I've done this enough. I mean, this is another thing that you shouldn't be doing. Mm. Mm. Damn, it's good though. I got these little mark down packs of lights. These are great because I like a dollar a pack or 50 cents a pack. So they're handy little GU10s just for testing. They're LED based as well. Uh, there we go. So they've got some little LEDs in there. They're 470 lumen, 5.5 watt, but 85 watts worth of output or some crap like that. But, I mean, 50 cents each or something like that, cannot complain. So, put each of these in, use them for testing, use them for workshop lights, use them for what you want, scrap the parts out of even. Because as you can see, they've got a nice little transformer in them. It'll switch my power supply. Now, you switch this back on. Wait for it to boot up. See how snappy she is. Boot time's pretty good. You can see it's uh, instantly got the local temperature, but it pulls the time and the weather based on, I guess, your internet connection location. So now that that's on. I'm pretty happy with that. I like it. I might actually buy a few more of these for the house, especially if flashing with ESP Home goes well. So if you have any feedback, if you want anything else tested, definitely let me know for now. I'll put the link below. Definitely leave some comments. This is a new channel, so I'm always impressed with uh, any sort of engagement. But this is good. Uh, 9 out of 10, because nothing gets 10 out of 10. Enjoy.
Uh, now, what I forgot to mention, I'm just going to quickly add in, there is an NS Panel Pro. It's currently on special. It's got heaps more features. I don't know them all, but I'll leave a link to that below as well. For now, I'm happy with this form factor because it meets uh, the same specifications as our light switches in Australia. So if you try out the NS Panel Pro as well, definitely let me know what you think and if it's worth getting one. Cheers.